derive the equation for the thermal efficiency of the ideal Brayton cycle, assuming a cold air standard analysis. So this is that equation. It's the thermal efficiency. And it's really interesting that you can get it wrapped up, I know there's some assumptions behind this equation, to such a simple expression. It's just the pressure ratio and K. And K is typically just 1.4, because that's what you would deal with, cold air. So it's just a function of pressure ratio. Isn't that almost mind-boggling? The first time you see it, it can't be that simple, but it is. It does work out to be that simple. So if you want to derive this expression, do this. Go ahead and construct a temperature entropy diagram. You do it enough times, and then you get really good at it. True? Remind yourself what's happening between each of the states. Put, put in even a, a little diagram. Compressor, I'm going to call it burner this time. Sometimes I just call it heat exchanger. Turbine, and then just some heat exchanger to close the loop. And put in, okay, this is state one, state two, state three, state four, right? And the flow goes this way through the system. All right. So the equation for the thermal efficiency, is that equal to the work net out divided by Q in? And is that equal to the Q net divided by Q in? Is that equal to Q in minus Q out divided by Q in, where I am treating this, 2 to 3 is Q in. That's Q in to the burner. And a positive Q out right here, positive Q out. So I'm taking account for that negative sign, Q in minus a Q out. Okay. So this thermal efficiency starts to look like the form of this 1 minus something. True? See how it's 1 minus something? So that's very consistent with the other ones. So if you want to follow, this is 1 minus. What is the Q out in terms of? Is that H4 minus H1? In N, is that H3 minus H2? Did I do that right? And is that equal to 1 minus C sub P T4 minus T1 divided by C sub P T3 minus T2. Notice that at this point, we finally make the use of cold. The cold, air, everything else, it, it doesn't matter if it's cold or variable specific heats. But at that point, you assume that, oh, those delta H is equal to C sub P delta T's. The C sub P's cancel. And continuing up here, we get the thermal efficiencies, 1 minus, pull out in the numerator, T1. Pull out in the denominator, T2. So you have T4 divided by T1 minus 1, and T3 divided by T2 minus 1. True? All right. If you doodle on the side or go back and remember our equations, put it kind of in this box right here, that T2 divided by T1, it's the ideal Brayton cycle, it's, it's reversible compression, is equal to the pressure ratio P2 over P1 to the power K minus 1 divided by K. We use that, true? Good. Now, the other thing is we have to work with, we have to work with this expression T3 over T2. Well, is that equal to T3 divided by T4 times T4 divided by T1 times T1 divided by T2? Does that look reasonable? And this uh, ratio right here, 1 to 2 is the reciprocal of, of the line above. True? But also, go and look at 3 to 4. That's, and when you make the product of 
3 over 4 times 1 over 2, that they canceled, they're equal to 1. And so this result gives me just T4 divided by T1. So T3 divided by T2 is the same as T4 divided by T1. I'll kind of repeat that without doing a lot of algebra. But this ratio right here times this ratio right here is unity, is, is 1. Now that we see that, now we, we can say, oh, well, this is equal to that. And so what the efficiency is, is, is 1 minus T1 over T2. Oh, we already know what T1 over T2 is. It's 1 over P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. So that's the result we wanted to show.